All right, so here we are going to show how to lay out a capacitor and a resistor in AMI 0.5 micrometer process. We're going to get started from resistor. Uh, I will continue with EDA tutorial 3. I will create a new cell view. I am going to name it as resistor demo schematic. Okay, And after that, I'll place a resistor in the schematic. Okay, this is only a simple demonstration how I can lay out this resistor in cadence. So I'm gonna define two pins for the resistor A and B, and both pins we're gonna define them as input output. I'll place the pin on the schematic, okay? So this is a schematic for the resistor, right? Nothing special. And I'm going to close this, create a new view for the demonstration. So go to File, Cell View, Resistor, Demo. Now I'm going to create a layout for the resistor, okay? Click OK. So now uh, we have to lay out the resistor. And the things in order to do that, we have to understand the structure, the layers available in this process. So basically, uh, on Blackboard, you can download this MOSIS wafer acceptance test results. Uh, basically, it uh, reports the uh, process-related parameters after they fabricate a wafer and measure it based on the measurement result. So this result actually will be updated quite frequently. So every time Moses uh, do a shuttle tape out, they may get the parameter for this specific tape out from the foundry, and then they will update this report. And uh, from the report, what we can see is in this process, we definitely have different layers, metal one, metal two, poly, right? And there is a very special layer, poly2 underscore HR. And this is going to be the layer for resistor layout. Okay. And basically, we have a polysilicon layer. You can use it for the gates of a transistor. That's very straightforward, right? And you have another layer, uh, specially tuned, engineered to have a high resistivity. Okay, so HR actually stands for high resistivity. So we're gonna use this laser to lay out resistor. Okay, and after resistor, we're gonna lay out a capacitor. So if you continue with this document on the next page, actually it, re it reports the unit capacitance between adjacent lasers. For example, between M1 and M2, you have uh, capacitance and here highlighted this number is the capacitance between poly and the special laser poly 2 underscore HR okay so you can use actually two layers of poly to make a capacitor you have two plates right then that's a capacitor likewise uh, in the future if you do any radio frequency design you can also check out what is the parasitics if you have two metal uh, paths uh, on top of each other, right? So, for example, here you can see metal 1 and the metal 2, the area uh, capacitance, you can read it out, okay? For example, between metal 2 and metal 1, and metal 1, so uh, vertical direction metal 1, horizontal direction metal 2, so the crossover point tells us the parasitic capacitance between metal 1 and metal 2 is 32 uh, AF per unit micrometer square. Okay, And what we are going to use for party between party and party 2 is actually 878 AF per micrometer square. Okay, So what you do is you have to estimate what's going to be the area needed for your compensation capacitor and then draw the structure on uh, in cadence, all right? So let's let's start from the resistor. And again, for resistor, we use party 2 underscore HR. And in cadence, it's denoted as party uh, electric. So we we can, let, let's look at the laser in cadence, okay? 
In cadence for the joining natures, we have N well active, N active, P active. Those are for transistors. We have polysilicon for gates, and this laser is actually the poly two underscore HR laser for resistor. Okay, so we're gonna use this to draw our resistor. So what I do is I select this laser E L E C, then I hit the bind key R to draw a rectangle. So remember it's R, all right? I'm gonna draw a rectangle like this from here to there, all right? And uh, so basically this is gonna be a resistor. From one end to another end, you definitely can estimate the resistance based on the parameter given from the PDF file, okay? based on the parameter here. And it tells us per unit square, the resistance is one, approximately one K ohm, right? Okay, so now let me go back to cadence. And here, I guess we are, we approximately have two unit squares, right? Maybe a little less than two unit squares. Then I wanna add a contact for the resistor on each side. So I can go to create, Go to via and select. Now I want the metal one to ELEC laser, right? And uh, I'm gonna have two rows like this on one side, and uh, two rows on the other side. And this is a simple view. If I want to switch to layout view, remember it's Shift F. Okay. Now I copy this contact from the left side to the right side. Very simple. And pretty much, I think this is more or less a resistor. And I have to denote I want for this polysilicon, special polysilicon laser, I want to apply the special engineering thing to increase the resistivity to make a high resist resistivity resistor. So I have to select, if I go down, here we go, we have high RES, high resistivity, right? And uh, again, using R to draw a rectangle on top of the resistor to indicate this laser, I really want to have a high resistivity. Okay. After that, I'll do verify DRC, run DRC. And uh, I was pretty lucky. It seems there's no problem in DRC. Let's check out the CIW window. So if I go to CIW window, here gives the report, total errors found is zero. Okay, so we have passed DRC. So after DRC, what's next? Extraction, right? So I'm gonna go to verify, extract, and extract the schematic view, extracted view, okay? Now, after that, extraction is done. I'm gonna open up the library manager and then for this resistor demo now we have extracted view right double click this guy open up the extracted view and the extracted view tells us the resistance from one terminal to the other terminal is 1.734 kilo ohm okay and this makes sense because if we check out the if we check out the document per unit square, the resistivity is about one kilo ohm, right? And if we look at the layout, we pretty much have between one and two unit square. Okay, unit square means the W equals to L, and this is a square, right? And if you put another square, then your resistivity will double because basically the resistance is determined by the width and length. Does this make sense? Okay, great. So re remember the re resistance is 1.734 kilo ohm. Okay, I'm gonna close this. Go back to our layout view. 
would you please <coughs> remind me after extraction, what else do I have to do? Elvis, yeah, thank you, Elvis. I have to make sure the layouts correspond to the schematic. They are exactly the same, right? So browse, schematic, find out register demo, find out schematic, click, uh, click uh, close. And then on the other side, I'm gonna find out the extracted view for this resist, resistor layout, all right? And uh, with that, those two fields are filled in, then I click Run. And if we go to CIW window, it shows the progress of LBS. So job is now started. It says that the LVS job has completed the netlist match. Okay, do we see any problem here? I guess there is problem. <laughs> the extracted view has 1.734 kilo ohm, but in schematic view, I didn't change the resistance. All right. Then how come it tells me it match? Anybody can help me? This is actually very similar to the case of checking out the size of transistor. All right. So basically, you have to go to NCSU modify LS LVS rule, and uh, on the bottom you have to check compare capacitor parameter and compare resistor parameter. Okay. You have to check those two in order for LVS to check the size of the resistor. Okay. But now I got another problem. Even though I checked that, LVS still tells me there's no problem. Then what's wrong? Let, 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 let's see what's wrong here. All right. So from the from the result, as we can see, in the layout, we have one resistor, two nets, but zero terminals. And uh, from the schematic view, we have one resistor, two nets, and two terminals. Okay. So the problem is actually I forgot to define the I forgot to define the terminal in layout. Okay. And because of that, the the software actually didn't even check the size of the resistor. Okay, so that was that was a mistake. So to mod uh, to correct that, let's go back to our layout view. I have to define two terminals A and B as we did in schematic, right? So now this is a contact from resistor one end to party one. I'm gonna extend the party one a little bit to route the signal out. <coughs> so I'm going to do this. And on the other side, I'm going to route the other signal out. Okay. And now we have to define pin. So create pin. And right here, we're going to define pin A and B. We will create a label for them. And those pin are input output pins. right? With that, I go back to the layout and place the pin over there. A is right there, and B is right here. Okay. After that, save the layout. I have to check out if I have any DRC problem. Seems like DRC is pretty happy. Uh, there is no problem on DRC, right? So I have to re-extract the circuit, click OK, and after that, go to the extracted view. Okay, Now, the extracted view, we still have 1.734 kilo ohm, but the nice thing is now we have A and B terminal defined. Okay, Does this make sense? All right. Now, let's see if we can pass DRC. So, go back to the DRC engine, uh, uh, sorry, LVS. So let's run LVS.
and check out the progress on CIW window. So LVS is started. What? <laughs> LVS job has completed the netlist match. Let's see what's wrong. Output. Okay, we have two terminals. We have one resistor. Okay, those are okay. Two terminals. I don't think LVS really checked the size of the resistor. Let me double double check the setup for LVS. So go to layout. All right, go to layout. NCSU modify LVS rule. Compare capacitor parameter, compare resistor parameter. If we check that, verify LVS, resistor demo, extracted view schematic. <coughs> Run LVS again. Oops. Okay, so here we caught a bug uh, for cadence. Uh, somehow yesterday I enabled the resistor and the capacitor parameter check uh, function, but it turns out actually I have to reselect it. Okay, so now this gives us reasonable result. LVS job has completed. It tells us the netlist match logically, but have mismatched parameters. So go to LVS window, look at the output. So if we check out the output, now what's happening is it's really comparing the size of resistor. In layout, it tells us the size is 1734 ohm, but in schematic view, it's only 1K. That's a problem, okay? So if I want to fix this, I have to either change the layout or change the schematic, <coughs> right? So I'll take a short path. I'm going to only change the resistance, okay? So resistance, I'm going to change it to 1734. Save the schematic and run LVS again. All right, so this time it tells us LVS job has completed net list match, okay? And if we open up the output file, then there's no complaint about the size of resistor, okay? All right, so the takeaway for uh, this uh, resistor, uh, resistor layout demonstration is uh, always remember By default, this NCSU design kit, they don't check the size of capacitor and resistor, all right? For your final project, you have to make sure you check these two options to compare the size of capacitor and resistor. And also you have to check this, uh, this option to compare the size of the transistor, okay? All right, do we have any question regarding the resistor layout? Okay, all right, then always remember for resistor layout, we are using this special laser, and this special laser is ELEC in cadence. Okay, and uh, in reality, it actually stands for this ELEC laser actually stands for poly 2 underscore HR, high resisti resistivity laser. Okay, poly 2 underscore HR. All right. 
Okay, so I'm gonna close this and uh, we're gonna have the second uh, demonstration how to lay out a capacitor. So go to File, New, Cell View. I'm gonna create a capacitor demo. Create a schematic first, all right? And uh, again, place a component in schematic view place this capac capacitor there and add the wire define two terminals A and B okay and uh, place the two terminals on schematic view so this is the schematic for our capacitor now I'm gonna create a layout so go to file new cell view capacitor demo we are gonna have layout view okay and now let's review the theory of capacitor layout in this process basically we are gonna use two layers we are gonna use we are gonna use party and party 2 okay between the two layers of party, we have parasitic capacitance. And because the distance of the two party layers are pretty close, we can make the capacitance density pretty large. All right. So in cadence, first things, I'm going to draw the bottom plate. And that will be based on party. Okay. Use R to add rectangle. I'm gonna draw this rectangle here. All right. This is the bottom plate, and for the top plate, I'm gonna add ELEC. Again, the special ledger of party will be realized based on ELEC. Okay. So I'm gonna draw another ledger using short uh, hot key R. Okay. So basically, this is going to be a capacitor. Right? Does this make sense? A capacitor. And uh, I'll run DRC, and hopefully I can get some error information. Yeah. So now, as we can see, we have two highlighted regions shown on the layout, which means we got error. Okay. If we go to CIW window, it tells us the error is party enclosure of capacitor electrode should be larger than 1.5 micrometer which means the party should be extended out and the distance between the edge of the party and the edge of the higher layer of party should be more than 1.5 micrometer so i'm gonna drag this out all right just like this and uh, do a drc again and in your project, you can make it more precise. You can measure like from here to there, make sure it's about 1.5 or a little bit more than 1.5, right? And you can also make the layout more balanced, okay? But here I'm just going to uh, save some time, uh, randomly increase the size, make sure there is no DRC error, all right? So after that, we get the capacitor, and then we have to get the signal out we have to make the connection to signal route right so what I do is go to create add a, sorry create add a via and for the bottom plate I'm gonna add a via from metal one to party with two rows I'll place it right here okay and for the top plate I'm gonna add uh, a via from metal one to ELEC, and again, probably I'll choose two rows. Okay, place it right here. Okay, so now we have contact for the two plates, and we can extend the signal out using metal one signal path. Is this right? Okay, I'm gonna do DRC to make sure there is no violation. Okay, and it seems DRC is pretty happy about my layout. So I'll add metal one path. 
to extend the signal out. Okay. And and here I'm just showing how to get this done, but you can definitely make the layout much better, right? Extend it out, and I have to define two terminals. So go to create, pin, no. go to create, uh, pin, and the terminal name will be A and B. And I'll choose create a label so that I, so that I can uh, view the name of the pin and they are gonna be input and output pin right and I'm gonna draw the pin using metal one so that the pin is uh, connected to the signal path okay so here oops, sorry create pin a b all right go to this graph zoom in place pin a here and uh, Go to the other side, place pin B there, okay? And the labels are not shown because we have to go to options, display, and display the pin names, all right? And click OK. All right, so A and B defined. Now let's do verify DRC, and uh, there should be no problem with DRC, let's see. Yeah, DRC error found zero. That's good. And then extract this layout. All right. After that, go to our library and uh, check out capacitor demo extracted view. So the extracted view actually tells us I have a capacitor formed. All right. Does this make sense? And it also tells me what is the size of the capacitor. It's 83.45. Femto. All right, and now let's try if I can do LVS. So go to verify LVS. And then I have to change the cell to our capacitor, right? This is something we have to be careful because uh, when you open LVS, it still has the last information when you run LVS. So you have to update and point to the right schematic and extracted view, all right? Now click Run. And if I check out the progress, now LVS is finished. It tells us LVS job has failed to run to completion, examine those two files in the wrong directory for more information. Let's see. Uh, say, uh, say it again. Cell view. Okay. The name. Okay. Did I have a typo here? Oh yeah, I have a typo here. <laughs> so, ah, it's too early for me. Capacitor. Capacitor. Is this right? Should be, okay, to be safe, let's browse, okay. <laughs> browse EDA3, capacitor demo, <coughs> select schematic. And here, browse to capacitor demo, select extracted view, <coughs> all right. Run LVS. So now it says LVS job is now started. I'm quite happy we got several errors, so this shows Whenever you, you, you got problem in Cadence, don't panic. There should be some reason for that, right? Just patiently debug the problem. And now it tells us LVS job has completed net needs match, logically, but have mismatched parameters. Can somebody help me? What's going on here? What's the problem? Size, right? Size, because we enabled comparison of the size. Great, thank you very much. So go to extracted view. The size actually is only 83.45 femto. So let me adjust the size in schematic view. 83.45 
femto, all right? And uh, let's now run LVS again. Oh, can I run LVS now? We have to extract on, yeah, yeah we, 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 we can. I only change the schematic. Okay, so run LVS. But if you change the layout, you have to re-extract the view, right? Okay, LVS job is now started. And this time, netlist match, right? Okay, so great. Uh, basically what we have done is we have laid out resistor, we have laid out capacitor. And uh, for both of them, the key is to use the ELEC laser, right? ELEC laser, it's a special polysilicon laser, all right? And uh, what else? All right, so for the project, actually, uh, we have to do it in a different way. Here, I, I, I was changing the size in schematic to match with the layout. But for your project, what you really have to do is you have to change the size of the plates in layout so that the capacitance match with your layout, uh, schematic value, right? Okay, so with this, let me stop the screen recording.